every single day. There's probably thousands of cyber attacks, but when it takes down large organizations, that's when people wake up. Hundreds of thousands of computers around the world were hit by a computer virus called WannaCry. It's the biggest cyber attack of its kind in history. Users face a $300 demand to unlock their data. WannaCry was a pretty big event. It became a big deal in the security industry. A security researcher named Malwaretech was doing some reverse engineering of WannaCry and actually stopped it. British authorities say the spread has slowed thanks to an anonymous blogger known only as Malwaretech. Everyone thought of him as a good guy using his powers for good. But sometimes it is hard to tell whether someone's activities might be good or bad. The young researcher who helped stop the spread of the WannaCry ransomware virus has been arrested. This is Chris Weisofel. He's the CTO of Veracode, and he's been hacking for decades. Information technology is pervading every single part of our lives. And it's important that all those systems are secure. Look at WannaCry. Malware tech actually stopped it. It wasn't law enforcement that stopped it. It was someone from the hacker community. Back in the 90s, I was a member of the hacking group Loft Heavy Industries, or The Loft for short. Loft testified before Congress about security vulnerabilities on the internet. Part of what you're trying to do is demonstrate something that you feel like the American people need to know, and that's part of our job also. We had a demonstration online where if you clicked on our website, it would crash your computer. We all know this is a problem now, but back then, the people who were building software had no idea what this was. We started to raise awareness within the government that the government should probably listen to hackers. We think there's a tremendous asset that the hackers actually bring to the table here in understanding. This was really the first time where um, hackers were looked at as a source of knowledge that could be helpful for, for society. Their testimony before Congress could be considered the birth of the modern cybersecurity industry. When internet security is compromised, it is often hackers who find a way to solve the problem. When WannaCry hit, it became a big deal in the security industry. That's, I think, where a lot of people got introduced to malware tech. He was, you know, a good malware researcher doing good work. When we caught up with malware tech this summer, the once anonymous hacker was still reeling from his sudden fame and press attention. So talk me through what happened on the morning of May 12th. Where did WannaCry come from? How do you run malware without it infecting you? I'm known by the name Malwaretech, that's my Twitter handle, it's also the name of my blog, and until recently this was the only name people knew me by. You've been called the man who saved the NHS, that must be a tremendous buzz for you. I'm kind of a private person, I don't really like fame, so being sort of forced into the spotlight was not great for me because my friends did not know about Malwaretech and the people who knew Malwaretech did not know about me. I think the figure was around 2 million machines which he managed to stop being infected, which is insane. There is this area when you're researching, it does get you in touch with people that are criminals. It was very weird to see kind of the malware tech I knew be thrown into the spotlight like that. That can get him in a lot of trouble. The nature of his work is disrupting cyber criminals and I think that could make him a target. 23-year-old Marcus Hutchins has been arrested by the FBI. A few weeks after our interview, Marcus Hutchins was arrested for allegedly creating a piece of malware called Kronos, which allowed hackers to steal banking credentials from infected machines. Initially, it was pretty shocking because he was known as a malware researcher that had helped protect people from WannaCry. Marcus was arrested in Las Vegas. It's been reported that he was attending DEF CON, the world's largest hacker conference. DEF CON has traditionally been a bridge between federal authorities and cybersecurity researchers who want to alert the world to potentially dangerous exploits. But Marcus's arrest highlights a long-standing tension in a relationship where trust is critical, but often lacking.
Security researchers are going to get close to criminal enterprises to understand how that ecosystem works. It's much like an investigative reporter that wants to talk to someone who's part of a criminal organization. There's knowledge to be learned from uh, actually directly contacting the criminal element. The malware researcher is doing this online, right? They're interacting online, maybe through emails, message boards, websites, and things like that. That gray area is why people in the cybersecurity industry are worried about the outcome of the malware tech case. They want to make sure that the authorities don't confuse legitimate researchers for the very hackers they are trying to stop. We don't know a lot about the case. This case could be really critical for the security research community. Whether he did it or not, there's going to be some precedent set here. It's not clear whether he was doing research or he was participating in causing harm from malware. So in, in this case, people in the security industry are afraid of areas of security research being illegal. What that means is only people that are criminals are gonna understand how those off-limits areas work.